my day job is uh, I, I'm a programmer on a game called Sports Fans, which you may or may not have heard of. Um, it's like a local multiplayer compilation thing that you see on PS3 in a bit. Uh, this has got nothing to do with my day job at all. Uh, so, so my day job is, is programming, um, but I'm quite interested in the like, whole gamut of making games. Um, and one of my things I'm properly passionate about is making levels for games. Uh, so, uh, Alan, who I know from going to like various game jams and that sort of thing, uh, asked me to come and talk about some level design stuff. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I'm going to do. Um, so, yeah, so uh, I guess like to make sure I'm getting the, the like the target right. How many people here have made levels before for games? Okay, that's everyone. That's good. <laughs> Uh, and so, so what sorts of sorts of levels? Like two D things, three D things? What? Two D things. Uh, game modes. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, I made a bunch of doing stuff back in the day. So, so yeah, like um, I, I guess I've done a bit of three D level design in my time, but uh, but yeah, I'm definitely focused on doing two D stuff. That's kind of the sorts of games I make myself are always two D. So that's kind of what my thing is. Um, I really hate slides, so I'm not going to do any slides at all. I'm going to try and do some like practical things, uh, which may bomb horribly or maybe quite certainly. Um, we'll see. Uh, I may need someone to uh, like play the game, which will be like a limit to how far this is <laughs> In fact, that's probably it, like at the limit already. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we may need someone to move a little bit closer, even uh, recording it. Sorry. Um, yeah. Drive to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, so kind of a starting point here is this is a, a little like kind of jam game style thing that I knocked up yesterday evening just for purposes of this. Really should have done it before then, but uh, that's what it is. Um, <laughs> so it's this little character. You can run around left and right using the stick. Oh no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Test these things before you say what you can do. Um, <laughs> oh, what's it doing now? Just a second. Um, like that. I need to load to a key before you'll be able to do anything. Now, hopefully, you should be able to run around and jump a bit. So you've got kind of that simple thing, um, but it's like it's a pretty boring space. There's nothing to do. There's no objective or none of that. Um, so it's not even really a game yet. Um, so if you want to, but there's sort of some mechanics involved. And if I put some blocks down, you can jump on them and, and like that's a game almost. <laughs> kind of not really. Uh, but the thing that's that's mainly missing is an objective. So we'll put something there. Yeah, you win. Um, <laughs> and and then what what's missing if you've got an objective is is like some sort of challenge to to get to that. Um, so you can kind of see you've got this like simple level thing. Uh, maybe I could add some things you jump across. Um, and go, okay, so we can jump up here, whatever, that's, that's another jump, another jump there, put the objective there, yeah, we made a level, isn't it amazing? But it's a pretty awful level, uh, it still looks like a box, um, so, so you can find it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's not even possible. Uh, <laughs> So kind of, it's obviously not as far as just like put some obstacles in the way and then you've got a level and, and that's kind of done business. There's, there's a lot of things that are going on that kind of make up uh, what would be good level design. Um, so there's kind of, there's quite a mechanical thing of just like things have to be doable, uh, they have to be possible and like this. Um, they also, there's some sense that you don't want to completely overtax a player um, so when they're just starting to play, if you 
throw them into the most difficult possible jump they could ever have to make, then they won't make it and they'll go, this game sucks because it's too hard. Like, I can't, I don't even know what I'm trying to do. Uh, and likewise, if you try and introduce all the mechanics that you have in the game at once, um, then then also you just can't, players can't get the hold of, of what they're meant to be doing. So there's that mechanical sense in which you want to be introducing things slowly and at a, a level that players can take um, without being glacial and kind of just boring people by saying, hey, you can do this easy jump, now let's do 50 more easy jumps until you've really got it nailed. It's just no one, no one likes that. So there's this quite difficult thing to, of pacing to get right. Um, then there's also levels are important in an aesthetic way. Um, they have to to look like something that's, um, they have to be appealing. Uh, they don't have to be appealing, but if they're not, then they're, they're losing a lot of the, the possible power that they could have. Um, so this level is clearly a box. It looks like a sort of test thing. There's no, there's no feel to it, there's no character to it. Um, so, so that's like another direction. Um, that, that you have to pay a lot of attention to. I, I guess those are the two two kind of main main things. Although so it ends up being being kind of other considerations along the way. Um, things like you might want to have uh, a certain pacing between a set of levels, and, and also some kind of aesthetic feeling between a set of levels. Uh, so let's like let's ditch this one and try and come up with something something that might be an appropriate first level in the game. So we're going to keep it simple, not, not use too many mechanics. Um, like there is another mechanic I haven't shown yet, but I'm deliberately uh, avoiding that for the moment. Um, we're gonna try and make it look less like a, a horrible box um, that you can't really do anything in. Um, and also try and, try and teach something. So, so whilst, whilst the kind of mechanics of this are quite simple, you run around and you jump, and probably everyone in the room has played countless games where you run around and jump. Um, it's still worth trying to ease players into these sort of things. Um, the reason that's, that's like a important thing, even, even if you expect all your players to already have some idea of the sort of mechanics, is um, kind of a, a jump in a video game or, or like a pushing a block in a video game or any of these kind of really cliche things. They feel so different in, in so many games and have kind of different quirks. Um, and it's much more enjoyable as a player if you kind of get eased into these things. Uh, if you just get jumped into some difficult scenario and you get told, like, you know how to jump, right? D do these 50 hard jumps and you, then you can move on to the next thing. It just kind of it feels awkward. So, so you might end up having experienced players taking two seconds over it, but it, it doesn't mean it's not worth getting getting right. So yeah, I'll, I'll just jump in and use some stuff. Uh, da -da. So first, like the ceiling is sucks. <laughs> Why have a ceiling? There's no real like logical reason for it. Um, So let's also kind of make it a bit more like an actual bit of land. Uh, so I'm keeping the sides high still, so you can't jump off because it's kind of, um, well now you can, I think I'm gonna make that. Um, so whilst there's, there's like invisible walls at the edge of the level, um, it can be kind of, if, if I put a gap there, so if it looks like this, then kind of the feeling is going to be that you can run up the side. Like, that. no, you can't. It just looks like that. So I'm kind of using using the visuals of the level to represent the physicality of it. Uh, because, because you can see that there's a wall there, it feels right that there's a wall there. If you can't see that there's a wall there, then it feels wrong, even if you know what the like mechanics are. So, so kind of things like that feel a bit kind of uh, trivial, but they're actually super important. Um, so let's build this up a bit. So I, I'm thinking 
I'm thinking if we were starting from the left hand side rather than the right hand side. Um, and I don't want this level to be just a straightforward run across and get the objective here. Because, like, that's, there's, a, there's a limit to how simple you want to go. You want to have some challenge or some, some sort of feel, even from the very first level of the game, there needs to be some, something to grapple with. So I'll take in something. Uh, so we can out them with this. So if there's a little jump you have to do. Do that, too big a jump, so it has to be a sort of appropriate size. Um, and then some other things I'll do. Uh, so, this like little niche bit here, it kind of makes it feel a bit friendlier to walk down into it. Um, so, so, there's like lots of these weird, um, weird things which are a bit hard to kind of define exactly how they work, but, but what I mean is it goes a bit friendlier. There's something almost kind of alluring about the going down the steps. Uh, it doesn't feel like you're jumping. It, when, when you're starting a new game and you've no idea what the mechanics are going to be like, if you just see this big cliff edge, it feels bad to walk over it because you don't yet know whether, um, whether it's going to hurt you or, or anything. You know, it's like, it's fairly standard in platform games, but no, you won't get hurt, but, but you don't know that. And something like having those, those like, in-cut steps like that just kind of encourages you, hey, it's okay, you can walk down this, it's fine. Um, it's still pretty bland, so, so maybe I'll, I'll stick in just <laughs> a bit of features here, maybe like that. Starting to feel a bit more like like the level, and maybe instead of having the goal there, we'll, we'll kind of force the player to prove that they really know know that jumping is is how you how you progress in this game by by making another one to finish. So it's still like a super simple level, um, and kind of a bit like the first one we saw. There's there's nothing to it apart from doing some jumps, but suddenly uh, it feels a bit like a flex. Um, and we've kind of uh, we're trying to to tease the player, especially um, especially a player that might not have an idea of what they're doing yet, uh, into doing the right behaviour. So that's some, sort of something that I'll see again and again in, in good level design. Is will be uh, is it will kind of encourage the player to do the right thing, whether that's solving a puzzle or dodging an enemy or this kind of, you can use the architecture of the level to kind of try and hint at what should be happening, um, which is something that's often very hard to do in games. Um, and it's why you get these kind of overall, overblown tutorials to try and like say, you should be pressing this button now or duck because an enemy's a bit, but you can, you can do so many of these, these clues uh, through the, the structure of an environment rather than through I should, I should have made that one high. <laughs> this is why level <laughs> like testing is super important to me. Um, so yeah, that's kind of kind of an example of a, a starting point to, to kind of making a making a level. Um, and then the thing to do, you've just taught some stuff, so so it's really good to kind of try and up on on a, a next step where you can go from from you've just taught a simple mechanic, like you can jump. Um, the next step is to kind of try and make the player prove that they can, prove that they have learned the lesson and ideally up the stakes a bit. So, so instead of this utterly safe uh, kind of trivial thing, maybe make something a bit harder. So I'll just obliterate most of this. Um, so, like a another level thing, I put some spikes here, which come up and down. Um, uh, <laughs> too many hotkeys. Uh, which one's spike? Okay, that one's spike. Uh, but I don't want them there. So that's probably not, so. So this would probably be just about possible. 
uh, that jump is maybe measurable? Maybe not. <laughs> uh, okay, so this jump, this jump almost certainly is possible. But it's quite a big ask. Um, it's pretty bad to, to throw in jumps at the, well, to do anything at the limit of what's possible because it, it's actually got quite a lot of, of sort of motor neuron -y skill required to, to hit jump at the exact right moment. Uh, it's something that, that people who've been playing games for ages have always got because they practice it. Um, but it's, it's actually quite, quite a hard skill. So it's certainly not fair to do anything like that, at least early on. So, so whilst we're kind of having a pit idea is fine, it's probably a lot better to do something like that. Um, possibly even better to have a couple of these things. So then, let's say we've got this, we're going left to right again, fifty thing. Um, you've got quite a simple early jump and then, then a slightly harder one to follow. But that's still not that great. So if you're going from from this bit here, you could probably jump straight into the second pit. <laughs> not quite like that, actually. Um, but, or, or at least quite easily run off from one to the other. So we'll be a bit, a bit kinder to the player and do something maybe a bit more like that. Uh, so now there's, there's absolutely no way that they're going to screw up the first jump. They're, if they, the only way they can screw it up is, is by forgetting to press jump entirely. Um, and that's, that's kind of really good because that means that if they are likely to happen by chance. And you've just, you know that you've taught them that jumping is a thing that exists in this game. And you know that they've proven that they can jump because they've got past the first level. So it's kind of reasonable to start going in this next level. Hey, you have to jump now. You have to get it right. That's, that's an okay thing to start doing. Um, so kind of we, we've introduced another thing. Um, by making these, so, so the spikes are the other thing, like the graphics for the spikes are a bit ambiguous. You couldn't, like you could easily go, I don't know what that is. Um, it's like some like weird grass that just pops up and waves and goes hey. Um, so if I'd, I'd like introduce spikes uh, in, in the game by doing something like this, if I just put, uh, hey, there's some spikes here, then like it kind of looks a bit like maybe they're spikes, but it also looks good. It would be entirely forgivable to, to kind of see them as something else. Um, because the graphics aren't very representative. Uh, even if the graphics were representative, it's a bit unclear how they work in your game. But the moment I do something like this, and put them in this big, deep pit, uh, it suddenly, which one is it? It's suddenly hyper obvious, but, uh, but it's something bad. Um, you, you quite kind of the big deep chasm you pit is clearly something you don't want to fall into. Uh, even even leaving aside the fact of these these things going up and down. So so you kind of again it's it's using the architecture of a level to kind of clue in the player into what the actual effect is going to be if they do something. Um, so again that like that's one of the tricks that just comes up again and again, is, is like, how can I make the player realize what I'm trying to tell them? Um, so hey, um, like I could probably do, squeeze another five or six levels out of jumping and spikes and that sort of stuff. But I'll throw in something more interesting just so that we can like, see a bit more. Um, so, ditch this. Again, do that. Um, do this. No, that's not how that should work. Actually, no, I'll start with that because it'll be a good example. Um, not that thing, that thing. Okay, 
So what do you, oh, no, that's not right. <laughs> that's no good. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so it's kind of, looks like an impossible thing. Um, it's not, but there's no real clue to what you have to do. Um, it kind of feels like, hey, that made some change in my player, so maybe there's some other thing you can do. Um, and yeah, you figured out that there's another person, um, and that if you press it, something happens. But there's some problems with this. It, it kind of, it did introduce the mechanic, but there were a few, a few things wrong with it. One was when you when you found the new button, you pressed it, and you, like you immediately solved the thing. You didn't have to understand what was happening. Like you pro you may still not understand what exactly what was happening, or probably have some a fair idea, but you don't know much about how the mechanic works. You hit a button, and you are on the other side of the wall. Um, like what when I when I press button, do I walk to some place of a map, or is it tied to my position, or what? Uh, it's pretty unclear. So, so we can kind of try and come up with a, a better alternative to that, that, that teaches a bit more. Um, so one thing, oh. so again, we're gonna have, have some like impenetrable blocks. Be, be having a big impenetrable wall like that, it kind of, implies impossibility, it, it implies you cannot get through uh, to the other side without doing something different. Uh, and the fact we've got this nice gem that we've now established as, as a goal uh, means, so I've got to get to that, only it's not possible to get to that. And kind of, so, so what's up? <laughs> what can I do? Um, and we do want to, to have one of these gems because that's how you get through. And we want to place it in somewhere that the... So, so things that were problematic with this, this question are... Um, this is clearly something that exists, but it's not necessarily something that you're, you're going to... to realize that you're going to have to get up to and get. You're certainly not, not going to run into that accidentally. Um, and you might not spot the change very well when you jump up there because you're already doing something. So it'd be much nicer if it was sat on the floor somewhere um, rather than, than kind of suspended on a, in a, a platform above something. Um, just a bit. Um, so here, it still has some, some sort of presence because uh, it's, it's surrounded by these gaps, um, so it's not, if I just put it on the floor like this, then it looks either like a, just a, a kind of coin style pickup, or it looks like, uh, it actually it looks more like something that would cause you harm. Um, but uh, again, you're using, using like a, a, a bit of small step and a bit of like, visual uh, symmetry to go, hey, try this, uh, see what happens. Um, and it's kind of, it's a bit vague because it might not make everyone think, hey, I'll try this, see what happens. But it, at least it kind of hints towards some kind of, uh, some kind of positive reaction. Um, and then you can walk around and you can notice that something's changed and, and kind of there's still gonna be a bit of this this problem with they have to realise that they have to press another button. Like if I was making this as an actual game, I'd probably have some little font or have I can't remember what button on the controller it is, but have some kind of like little symbol of a button appear just to kind of drive home the fact that you will need to press a different button now because it's quite harsh to expect players to figure that sort of stuff out. Um, so other problems with this level is uh, you've just been given this cool toy and then uh, then that's it. Like you then do a jump and you finish the level um, and kind of it's it's really good if you've just given a player something new to do to make sure that they can carry on doing it for a while to get comfortable. Uh, if you kind of 
wait for the next like opportunity you have to use that mechanic in an interesting way, then they're probably not going to be so comfortable with it when it happens. So uh, we will move that gem away. Um, this one out, yeah. um, then fill that in a bit. And hey, let's do some symmetry there. Let's, uh, let's put another one there. Um, and maybe we can teach something else as well. So we do that and put a gem there. Then we can start here. And this kind of new level has got two substantial improvements to it. Um, one is you can use your ability again. Uh, and as much as you like, you can go back and forth between the two sides uh, and get some feel for what's involved. And also, there's now like a second ugly bit to, to figure out. So you know you've just got this ability that can walk you around. And what else is it going to do? Exactly. Uh, so that's shown that not only uh, can you use this ability every time, uh, also you can now have some the chance to figure out that walking through the red things is what gives you this ability. It doesn't always exist. Um, and also, you can use it in different directions. Uh, so you kind of, in a, in a very similar space, there's suddenly a whole lot more, more kind of teaching going on. Um, we probably actually escape now, as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's important whenever you put in like some sort of, of mechanic which is like, hey, you can teleport around, and, and suddenly everyone will teleport out of the level immediately. That's just what happens. So, so yeah, again, <laughs> testing this stuff like crazy is uh, What might actually be a nice thing to do is to lower this down to a point where you might be able to get over it using the teleport. Because then, then it kind of, there's no really strong game mechanical reason why, why that's an improvement, but uh, it means that if a player is going to be just mucking around in this level for a while, trying to figure stuff out, which is certainly what I do in these sort of situations. It's, it's one more thing that they can play with. It's like, hey, can I get on the top of that? Yeah, I can, cool. Um, and kind of those sort of things are, are small, but they add up. Uh, if, if everything you think, hey, it would be fun if I could do this, is something you can do, then it feels a hell of a lot better than if everything fun that you could do is just like, nah, sorry. That's, that's not possible. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess I guess probably the next thing is to talk a bit about pacing. Um, so this is kind of being being gradually easing in to, to like doing some early levels, um, and and pacing is super important. Um, so by pacing I mean kind of how the difficulty changes over time. So um, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, so yeah, so uh, it's it's kind of important that uh, there aren't any. So so you can almost imagine like a curve of difficulty over time. So so if it, you don't want to start really hard because people just start playing and go this sucks. Unless you're going for that kind of massacre, I want to be the guy sort of just like. I'm going to make it insanely difficult from the first second because that's what this game is. But most people aren't doing that, so, so kind of starting with that super high difficulty is just, it puts people off. Uh, it certainly put me off, okay, it's like, I want to be the guy. But, uh, so, so you want to start on the easy side of the scale and, and to have some kind of uh, feeling of, of your skills progressing, it wants to get more difficult over time. Um, but kind of, you have to be, be careful over that. Uh, if you just do a, this sort of flat thing from, this is the easiest challenge, and this is a slightly harder challenge, and this is a slightly harder challenge, and so on and so on, so sort of all the way to the very end of your game. And they're kind of this really flat, uh, continuous rise between super easy and super difficult. It feels really dull to play. Um, and, and it's the reason is because you kind of get, keep on going, hey, it's the same thing, only there's a spike in the way, and like, 
has done it. Uh, and so, so it's kind of really important to try and make that up a bit. Um, and it's really nice if you can create sort of these these dips and troughs of, of difficulty. So uh, you might have a couple of screens or a couple of levels which are easier ones, and then you put some hard level that has some of the things that you've just learned from the last two couple of levels, um, and then you go back to something a bit easier again. Um, and that kind of feels much more rewarding because you've got this kind of hey, you've done some hard stuff, now, now here's some cool stuff. Uh, and, and that kind of feels a lot better than just slowly, gradually grinding harder and harder levels up. Um, it's also something that's quite hard to get a feel of because it kind of, without, it's, it's very easy when you're making your own games to get really caught up in how we ever, easy everything feels to you. And it's almost impossible to get a feel for how it feels to other people unless you're testing it. So, uh, I, I guess that's kind of just the takeaway about level design in general and, and game design in general is, is it has to survive contact with other people. Um, it's something that's nice about doing this, when you just go, hey, here's a level player. Um, but it's kind of quite a productive thing to be able to do generally. Um, so, so yeah, there's also kind of, um, and, and to get more difficult things, you usually end up having to combine mechanics in, in an interesting way. So we could make like a whole set of puzzles about jumping on things, or a whole set of levels about walking through things, but kind of it's a bit dull. Uh, or we can make a whole set of, of levels which is about timing run through spikes. So, so you could have like a level like, okay, let's do this. Entirely flat, that's really cool. And let's put some spikes in. Yeah, that's a cool level, right? <laughs> you just have to dodge through some spikes. Um, <laughs> and not only is it, is it slightly unfair in terms of difficulty, it's, it's possible. It, no, it should be possible. But it's kind of, um, it's just really bland. Like, suddenly, suddenly the aesthetics are rubbish again because we've just got this flat land. Uh, and it's also just really bland to play. Um, you've kind of, um, because there's kind of no variety in that challenge at all. Um, <laughs> and hey, we can make the next level like exactly the same, only we have have even less gaps between the spikes. Because that makes it harder and harder to test it, right? Um, and, and it hasn't made a better level, you've just made something that's. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you have to be kind of careful that you keep things varied even when you're ramping up difficulty. Um, and like combining different things is a really good way of achieving that. So, so like whilst there aren't many mechanics here, we can still do something a bit more interesting than something like that. Um, you could have, say, uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. So, So say we have this level where you start off something more cavern and maybe I can blow that up even more. So if I if I have like something like that, then hey, it actually looks like maybe this is some weird cave structure or something. Uh, maybe it's gonna be better than that. That's a possibility I guess. Um, and then like have have a warp gemmy thing, whatever that is. Um, and have another one in here, and maybe cut that out a bit, and put some spikes in here. So, 
like we haven't really added anything. There's still, still exactly the same mechanics as before, but you've now got to to use them and kind of prove your understanding of them in, in sync. Uh, so it's not that hard. You, you do exactly that, but uh, there's kind of a few things going on here. So 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 yeah, it's it's slightly more cabiny land, landscape. Um, which gives gives this very different aesthetic feel, which is a kind of an important thing. Um, it's a way you can create variety, even if you're not mixing up what you're doing. Um, and then there's this aspect of having to understand how the mechanics interact. So, so I guess the primary thing in here is realizing, well, you had to realize that you can zoom down as well as left and right enough, which we've kind of shown before. Um, so that's not a big step to make. Uh, and then the other one is this realization that you can uh, time your way around the spikes and, and zap through walls as kind of a, a combined thing. Um, and yeah, I, like, I, I guess maybe there's not a huge amount of point going too much further with, with that sort of line of thought because uh, like coming up with interesting combos is cool. But, uh, but that's kind of all there is to it. It's, it's kind of trying to come up with ways of, of using the mechanics that you have together. Um, and it kind of, what I find really helpful for that is, like I've just been doing live here, but, but if you do kind of small miniature versions of levels, um, like you can't do much smaller than this because the levels are quite small anyway. But it, I, I'll often, when I've just designed a bunch of mechanics, I'll spend a while in a level editor making like miniature problems. So, hey, I can zap through this wall. What can I zap through that wall when there's a spike in the way? Can I zap through that wall when? Uh, like, oh, actually, I can I can demonstrate one. Um, so, one thing that we haven't done and could be done is something like this. Um, So I'm totally ignoring the fact that it's ugly as hell and doing this. So, so there, it's like a can, can you do something where it's jump and then use the ability? Is that even a viable thing? I, I didn't know whether that's viable or not. Uh, I just thought, hey, that's probably something that will work. Let's try it. Uh, and it's kind of, that sort of thing is the sort of thing I do all the time when I'm implementing mechanics for a game. So I'm just like constantly flicking between implement a bit more, jump into a level editor, uh, go, is this a thing, can I, can I do that? Hey, yeah, I can, uh, I guess I guess I should try and use that in the level properly. Uh, so I'll, I'll kind of build up all these things. If I wanted to be like really strict about it, I should probably like take screenshots of all the exciting things that you could possibly do, or write them up or whatever, but in practice I don't. I just play for a while and then kind of use that memory of what are interesting things you might be able to do and then, then set out and make a whole bunch of levels. Um, so I guess something that I've kind of been demonstrating all along is that being able to make levels in the game itself is unbelievably useful. Like having having this this thing where I can just kind of go, hey, I'm gonna draw some level, yeah, that's cool. Um, <laughs> it's kind of, it, it was actually a pretty cheap thing for me to implement. Um, it really wasn't very difficult at all. Um, like, of the of the three hours or something that I spent making this game, the, the uh, I mean, I had some code lying around that made it easier, but but like the getting a level editable was maybe fifteen minutes of that work. Um, and it's a bit different. So sort of, if you weren't doing it this way, you, you would be using some level editor as an external tool, or you'd be putting levels into a big text file where you have like ones and zeros or hashes and spaces or, or some, some kind of arrangement which allows you to possibly visualize what you're trying to do. But uh, you, the thing with that is you're always 
loading into the game and you're kind of going, hey, can I play this? And then you're exiting the game and then you're loading your text editor up and you're tapping away and going, ah, okay, I better try out some more jumps and you do that and you go back into the game. And it just kind of, uh, the, the workflow there is so slow. You end up spending like 90% of your time making levels, just like flicking between the text editor and, and the game. Or, or worse, if you're not spending 90% of your time flicking between the two, you're, you're spending an hour making a level in the text editor and then trying to play it and going, oh, uh, why did I make this level like this? All the jumps, you can't make any of the jumps. Like, that was stupid. <laughs> I better start from scratch then. Um, so, like, I think it's incredibly, incredibly valuable. I cannot, cannot really stress that enough to, to be able to, to, like, edit levels as live as this. Um, mostly I don't have it quite as live as this. I have like some, some button that I can hit to say, I want to edit the level now. Uh, no, I want to play the level now. And the only reason I have that distinction is because this scheme as it is doesn't work well for things like placing enemies. Um, if I had something, if I had some enemies to place, I could put them down and then they start walking around and then like how where are they? Are they where they walk to, or where are they where I place them, and how can I tell where I place them, and how do I make them go back to where I place them to check that it works? So, so that needs some like distinction between I am editing, I am playing, but uh, but that's literally the only reason I, I think to do so. Yeah, I was just going to say uh, that made me think it'd be really cool to uh, make a game where the player can edit the level, but only limited, obviously, yeah. so they have to manipulate. I believe there are at least a few games that do that sort of thing. Um, uh, I can't recall what they're called off the top of my head, but I, I, I think I've seen at least a few that do that sort of thing. Um, I'd also really like to kind of make a game or, or a game-like thing where where you have someone editing the level and someone playing the level as like a competitive thing or, or kind of like a games master in a, an old school RPG sort of thing where you, you've got the, the level creator and the level player do those two lives. But yeah, um, like I guess that's probably the, the sort of semi vaguely structured stuff I wanted to talk about. Um, if people have questions, that'd be super. Um, but yeah, probably, probably about it. Interesting question. Um, what's uh, do you have like a, a an internet marketing that you could? Yes, like I do. Uh, I'll, uh, <laughs> so yeah, um, I yeah, I have a website which is jonathanwhiting.com. Uh, I'm on Twitter which is at whitingjp. Um, those are like the two main ways to get in contact with me. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. What's the news next? Yeah. <laughs> I read that for like five seconds. On the, before, on the level where you introduced the zipping mechanic, yeah, um, you said it would be cool to bring it down, like bring it down so you could zip on top. Yeah. Um, but wouldn't it then be possible to complete the level without zipping through it, and you kind of forget you might be able to not realise that you yeah, could do that's, that? Yeah, that's a fair point actually. Um, yeah, that's actually quite a strong, strong reason to not do that. No. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe you want to do that later on, later or maybe on, you yeah. want to have some other reason to do that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, and I guess that comes down to, to like play testing these things being super important because yeah, but like you can find that sort of stuff out yeah. or, or just thinking about it a lot. Um, it's good to revisit the old stuff you've made because because often you introduce exactly things like that. You thought it happens all the time in puzzle games, especially uh, as you think, hey, this puzzle's got a really cool solution. It's great. Uh, I definitely play this in the game, and then you come back to it a couple of days later and you realise that you can do it in a completely different and much easier way and therefore it's just completely invalid. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, you have to have to spend some time being aware that those sort of things can be confusing. But yeah, really good point. Yeah? Um, obviously in most games there's a lot more mechanics than yeah. this. So at what point do you know to sort of move on from the mechanics you've been testing the player with and start introducing new ones? Yeah, that's that's a really good question. Um, like that's that's the sort of thing that is, is 
kind of quite personal judgment, um, and it kind of depends a lot on the particular game and what facet of the field is going to be like. Uh, it also could depend on your mechanics because, uh, like, like for me, that's that's mostly a question of, of working out when you have exhausted the interesting things you can do with a, a particular mechanic. Uh, yeah. I don't like repeating things, um, like much at all. Uh, I'm super resistant to games that kind of spend a long time doing the same thing and it's slightly harder way. So I, I'll almost kind of. I, I don't do it quite as structured as this, but I'll, I'll almost like block out all the possible things that I can imagine being possible using this mechanic and my existing ones, and then work out interesting ways to put those into their world. And then when I'm at the end of, of for ones that seem worthwhile, there might be some that are just like, you can't make a nice level out of them, but when I, when I run out of interesting things I can do, I go, hey, I should either stop the game now or I should make some more mechanics. Um, but yeah, there's, there's definitely that, that point is a hard hard place to, to realise. Like, um, I was thinking um, Super Meat Boy does yeah. that very, very well, which is probably one of the reasons why it's successful. Because it, yeah. I mean, it splits um, the new mechanics into worlds. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think there's a lot to be said for that sort of approach of being kind of, I guess it's something I didn't, I, I deeply, deeply touched it on early on but didn't really mention since it's, it's really nice if you can kind of keep some theme either aesthetic or um, or mechanical between sets of levels ideally a bit of both so if you can have like the cave world where you do lots of jumping down or you know, kind of those sort of things really really help make uh, a space feel like a, a world uh, a, an actual environment rather than just like hey, this guy put down some blocks because he had to put down some blocks because he's making a game and that's what he did when you're making levels. Um, so it is really good to like think of these like groups of stuff that you can do and, and try and like tie areas together like that. Um, and, and like I, I can't remember quite whether Super Meat Boy is a good example of this or not. It's been a while since I've played it. But you get those... Um, you, you often have these things where you have these like distinctive worlds where like a new mechanic gets introduced and you use it loads um, and then you get a break from that for a bit because you go to the next world and then, then you kind of almost forget that that mechanic was a big thing in the game. And I really like that kind of variety you get there. And the other thing you get that's really nice there is like three or four worlds later you can go, hey, there's a crazy world where you can do all three of these things. And you have to and, and suddenly you get that, that feeling of having introduced something new without actually having to implement something new, which is brilliant. It's the best. Anything else? Yeah? Do you generally work with uh, sort of side-scrolling games then? Um, I, I've made a bunch of those sort of side-scrolling platforming things. Uh, and other things that I've done a whole bunch of recently is kind of building towards trying to make zelda -y levels for things. Um, like I really like that kind of, especially Zelda dungeons, I find really fascinating. So I've been doing quite a lot of top-down stuff um, relatively recently. Um, but yeah, I guess those sorts of things are, are more what I make nowadays. Um, I, I have done done some, some 3D level editing back in the day. There was this game called, uh, well I made some quake levels and some doom levels and some levels for a game called Cube, which which has this brilliant like in-engine level editing thing going on. Uh, it's brilliant because you can make levels almost that easily that you're in a 3D environment, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, it's definitely this sort of thing is my focus at the moment. I, I think I, I like that you can make quite a lot of space without spending hours and hours on it. Um, I find that kind of graphics design y 3D level design gets tiresome. Mm. You have to be more patient at that and that sort of thing than I am.
handling that had like so we usually head off to the pub now. You're welcome. Yeah, that's